here we had this new epidemic that was announced to the world on June the 5th, 1981. And nobody knew how bad it was. We knew it was bad. We knew it was terrible. Nobody knew quite how bad it was. We knew that because of this cascade of infections in Australia, we and other countries, we knew that it had to be stopped among people who inject drugs, otherwise it would reach out to the general community. Uh, my colleagues and I suggested, let's do a needle syringe program. And all our critics said, no, no, you can't do that. Um, you mustn't do that. Nobody said, don't do that, do this instead. They just said, no, you can't do that. And we did it. Since 1988 in this country we've been giving clean injecting equipment to drug users and we've been doing that because of the, the health mandate that says whether or not we approve, whether or not we like what people are doing, we know what people are doing and people are injecting drugs and they have been for many years and at this rate it's expected that they will be for many years. Much and all as we have you know, tried to stop an activity, that activity is occurring. Without needle syringe programs, we would have had a, a, a much bigger epidemic. We would have had uh, HIV would have got into the population of people who inject drugs in a major way, and it would have spread to the general community as it did in the United States. This service is a medically supervised injecting centre. It was the first service of its kind in the English-speaking world when we opened in May 2001. And basically it is a place that a person who uses drugs, who injects drugs, can come off the street and legally inject those drugs without fear of prosecution. And they can do it in a safe, non-judgmental surroundings. I think a supervised injecting facility is a eminently logical, eminently sensible next step, which is I know who you are and I know what you're doing with that equipment that I just gave you and here I'll provide you with a roof and some care. The feedback that you get from our clients, the, the single starkest, most commonly repeated phrase is thank you for treating me like a human being because I think that's unusual for the people that we see. I don't want to take heroin, I don't want to take cocaine or amphetamines, but if somebody else does and doesn't want to harm me or anybody else, why do they get punished? That's the most fundamental question in this whole issue, and that's what I've spent the last 27 years on. And nowadays, it's not just me saying things like that, it's former UN Secretary Generals, former Prime Ministers, former Presidents, and now even current presidents and current prime ministers are saying that and we're at long last seeing drug law reform starting to happen around the world. We now have about 70 or 80 countries that uh, have needle syringe programs around the world. All 27 members of the European Union have needle syringe programs and now that the epidemic of injecting drug use is starting to spread throughout Africa um, this century. Um, now we're starting to see harm reduction take root in Africa. NSP needle syringe programs have kept the rate of HIV amongst people who inject drugs in this country at about 1%. That is something to be absolutely proud of and internationally when we go to conferences it's something that Australia is, is very rightly acclaimed as, as, you know, a leader in the field. This was something that you guys did incredibly well. You stopped HIV from spreading in the population of people who inject drugs.